Uh, I feel really lucky to be here today because this is uh, just over three years uh, now from the time Rob and I really started this adventure. Uh, and that time has been pretty wicked. Um, and we've been able to really grow this massive community and you guys have really influenced and fostered that. And I just feel really thankful. And Christian, could you give me an example of a two clap real quick? Okay, so that is the highest honor here at Electric. Receiving a two clap is nothing short of winning an Emmy maybe. And everybody here, uh, those that aren't holding something, you know, participated in this two clap for everyone just being here today. That's thunderous. I love that. I love that. Um, so we dragged all of you out here from, you know, some near and some across the U.S. Um, but let's just talk about really the bread and butter of electric over the past year now is this 2.0. This 2.0 has just been an absolute massive success. And, you know, you many of you are seeing yourselves up here right now. You know, this bike last year was the third most popular EV in the United States, only behind the Tesla Model 3 and the Model Y. You know, that, that is something very cool. Uh, electric as a whole last year, and we'll do it again this year, will electrify more Americans than Ford, GM, Hyundai, Audi, Volkswagen, all of those guys combined, basically, if it's not Elon, you know, if you combine all those players, we'll electrify more Americans. This year we'll do nearly 170,000 people. So really, really cool being able to transform people's transportation. You know, the 2.0 was built off of the 1.0 and it's this inspiration and this idea, this moral compass we have of being the greatest urban transportation solution ever. Uh, if you look at the bicycle at its core, the bicycle is the single most efficient form of transportation. You know, if you look at the joules required and everything, it is the most efficient form of transportation. And the electric bicycle with pedal assist is the single most efficient form of motorized transportation. So it's so cool that a device that can be, you know, only weighs 60 to 70 pounds, be able to move someone that's upwards of 300 pounds, miles and miles and miles, so, right? So we think we've identified the right product and category to tackle that challenge and that idea of being the greatest urban transportation solution ever. But, uh, you know, this, this 2.0 uh, has been a challenging ride. Uh, I think some of you that were at the, the last launch you know, the massive demand and the wait times and the pre-orders and all that crud, it, it can certainly be overwhelming. Uh, and it's demanded electric to grow and mature at a really incredible rate. Um, but we've been having a blast with it so far. Um, but, you know, this right here, you know, it's clear that you guys have tremendous influence. And, you know, you guys have done, used it in a way to really inspire others to accept this form of transportation to be adopted in their lives. Just the 2.0 alone, we got over 140,000 of those uh, in circulation in just over a year. And I think that is just, that's not Robbie and I's doing or the electric doing, candidly. You know, this is, we can make really sick bikes and, you know, provide the best possible service, but we got to get the word out there. And us having it at that, you know, industry shattering price of $9.99. To be candid, a lot of that reason is because we avoid marketing to, you know, really well. And it's because of the advocacy from people like you. And then once we ship bikes, those bikes now work for us. And we've been growing this snowball. And, you know, to date, now there's over 200,000 uh, bikes out there on the road and everything like that. So, you know, when you think that, you know, it's uh, outsold every other electric bike model, but not a, just that, but really the majority of all cars and EVs here in the US, it's really cool that, you know, it, it sits in the third spot. Uh, but, you know, I, uh, man, I lose sleep 
you know, being in that third spot because it means we're two away, right, from being number one. It's like, well, shoot, right? If we made it this far, how, how do we progress forward and everything like that? And, you know, it, it has opportunity for improvement. I remember when Rob and I started this um, conversation of how do you revamp and improve already what's the best and most popular model in the United States. It's just the performance is there, right? We love that it has that class three, you know, performance, that jolt on the throttle, uh, those knobby wider tires for those all-terrain experiences. So it allows us to really appeal to a number of customers all at once. Uh, we love the fact that it's foldable, right? We love that we can be able to you know, skip the, the bike rack as a whole. I remember when Rob and I worked on the first XP, he had a 2007 Honda Civic and the goal was it had to fold and be able to fit in his trunk. And that was like the barometer we used on it and everything <laughs> like that. So th it was those thoughts and everything that really inspired and shaped this bike. It has to be delivered fully assembled, ready to ride because it's our job to build bikes, not necessarily our customer's job. And so, you know, there's a lot of good there. And then, you know, what we did is we started watching some reviews and then we started looking in the comment section and there's no shortage of recommendations uh, for what to be improved on. And some of those pain points, many of you may even took matters in your own hands to upgrade the bike, right? This class three performance, uh, you kind of run out of pedaling room, right? And are all the touch points, all that, comfortable and you know isn't it more enjoyable to experience life with others and we started to think you know the 3.0 has to exist and it has to be you know this massive improvement and it put a great deal of pressure uh, <clears throat> on our team and you know really over the last 10 months now we've been working on this and we're really excited to you know unveil it to all of you today so let's bring out some 3.0s you know and and show everybody what we're working with the electric xp 3.0 let's ride those puppies in uh, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> all right there he is all right so one of the first things you're going to see coming in here is this yet seat compatibility, wow. more cargo carrying capability. But what I'm most excited for is that passenger package over there in the back. So let's kind of just dive into you know the XP 3.0 as a whole. <laughs> um, so there's a lot to unpack here because to the naked eye, this is a very similar uh, bike and tonality and everything. And when we started this project, it had to exist within the XP family and feel like it belonged. You know, the, the flagship mono tube, the hidden battery, items of that nature are extremely important. Um, but what we wanted to address was some of the performance factors and everything like that. So what we can do is address the most exciting thing that I'm uh, looking forward to is this passenger package uh, because it's, too often that I was at a buddy's house and he only had one bike and we wanted to rip over to a restaurant or something. And then he has one bike, so now we're just jumping in the car, right? We need to solve that. If we really believe in trying to create the greatest urban transportation solution ever, it has to have passenger carrying ability. This is the first and most affordable dual passenger EV out there right now. It is the only one that is fully foldable, foldable still in the frame and up top. To do that, it was difficult. And we had to try to reinforce the frame in all of the right spots, do a built-in rear rack instead. And then we had to ensure comfortability for that person on the back. If you bring this frame up too high, you're bringing up your center of gravity. 
So we wanted to keep it low, but have the same standard for leg extension for a passenger rider. So we just pushed the pegs down to be where they traditionally would be on a BMX bike, right? So this still provides you the same riding position that you would expect on a other passenger carrying e-bike, but we brought down the center of gravity to create a more stable and comfortable ride. Because the reality is this thing still rips. This thing, we'll go into that, but this thing has a fun mode, a passenger mode, which is in tragedies uh, where you know it might get a bit too unwieldy with multiple people on them, and we wanted to eliminate that. So now there's a quick turn, um, just holding down two of the buttons, you enter into passenger mode. So when you have your precious cargo on the back, like this uh, yep seat, uh, or you know when Rob and I go to lunch later, he'll be on the back, he's my precious cargo, I'm gonna put it in passenger mode, <laughs> and we're gonna be able to commute together. Now, with this added weight on the back, this rear rack is weighted or rated for 150 pounds on the back. And with that, we need more power. And so this is our next gen motor, and this thing is nasty. There's no way around it. Uh, we greatly increase the torque of it, but the motor is significantly quieter than anything we've really done before. Uh, and it has the torque in order to go and jolt you up with your throttle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you know this motor if i if we've made the investment into the torque and the power of it you know we have to make the investment in the drivetrain as well i think as some of you were out there maybe you bumped it up to class three and you wanted to go 28 miles per hour and you ran out of pedaling that's just a reality of that 14t and we've dropped that down to 11 here. So this 11, paired with the new motor, you can get to 28 miles per hour really freaking fast. Meanwhile, maintain that speed all the way through so you're ripping down the you know, street and everything like that. It's just really refreshing, you know, as someone that's been riding XPs for pretty much since our prototype, four years now, to have a bike that I feel like I'm actually getting, if I want the workout, the workout is there. I can go nearly 30 miles per hour, but fully activate and use my legs all the way through. And this is one of those things where, you know, there's significant data to support that those, that people feel most comfortable using an e-bike as a transportation solution when they can better keep up with traffic. And if you're just, Grip and throttle, or you're running out of pedaling room, you're in the low 20s. Now you can confidently ride in the high 20s and do your best to keep up with traffic and everything. And this is just so, so important for that rider experience. So we're really, really jazzed about this new drivetrain and this new motor uh, and the car, the passenger, you know, capabilities that comes along with it. Now. Another gripe that we made of it. So we have upgraded some of the touch points. You know, no better way to describe these grips other than they're squishy and they're more comfortable. So the grips are more comfortable. The seat is sleeker, sexier, and uh, it kind of cups the butt better. And it's just, it feels better. I, I don't know, there's no better way to describe those things. It is pretty sexy. Yeah, it is sexy. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Dave. Um, so, that is you know, one of the other big things about it. Um, but then if we drop into the you know, controller itself, we've made quite a bit of investment into the controller because that was one of the most challenging things for us over the last three years. So we uh, upped the amperage on it, which basically allows us to push more current through the bike, not just to the motor, right? You're gonna feel that torque later, but also for things like this new Elite headlight. Uh, this Elite headlight uh, paired with this new controller, it basically supercharges what already was a very bright light. And now we can, you know, we used to say our lights are good for, you know, 
to be seen, right? Rather than to see out on the road. This is uh, one of our new accessories that definitely addresses that and casts a very, very large light across the, uh, the road. Now, going forward, still on the comfort side though, is our front suspension. So we've increased that from 40 millimeters to 50 millimeters, so a nice 25% increase. And you're actually gonna really experience that when you're out there riding because it's, it's such a noticeable difference as you're dropping off those curves that I think you guys are really going to appreciate that. Uh, now, onto the brakes. This is something we've also seen many of you do yourself and you know switching over to the 180s and that just seemed like a no-brainer if we were going to call this a 3.0 we've got to go to the 180 millimeter disc brakes so we've done that and so we wanted the you know the mechanics of the bike right first and foremost this is a bicycle and then beyond the bicycle it's an electric bicycle and so we wanted to upgrade the uh, drivetrain the front suspension the touch points and the uh, brakes. And we've done a really good job you know, doing that. And then we poured money into the motor and the controller in order to get that performance uh, that is now capable of carrying <coughs> secondary passengers and everything like that. It, it just, for us, it seems so important that this thing is able to carry more than one person at a time if it is going to be the greatest urban transportation solution ever. If we are to get that number one spot, we have to do things like this. So I'm really jazzed on you know these upgrades and everything, but candidly, I think we should just ride the bikes first and then we can you know rip around on them and kind of go from there. Yeah, Rob, is that good? Should we just rip around on some bikes real quick? What about the food banks. Oh, well, this is just, you know, I guess we can talk accessories a little bit, but there's a bunch of new accessories coming with this. Uh, this all just comes to our guts philosophy, guts with a silent E, greatest urban transportation solution ever. Um, because this is, you know, been highly demanded from our customers on the East Coast for this to not just be a transportation solution, but an economic opportunity for people. And so I think the back one can carry like a dozen pizzas or something at one time. So um, for all your pizza carrying needs, this is able to do it. Um, but yeah, we, we've expanded our uh, accessories and this is what we have today, but more coming down the pipeline. Um, but I just want, you know, for those that are comfortable and ready to rip, uh, putting this thing into class three performance and just going and ripping on this real quick because uh, once you ride it, you'll get it and you'll get real jazzed about it. So um, I do, before we you know do that, uh, this has been a project that has been uh, very difficult and uh, extended, uh, you know, the timeline of it was pushed back again and again, um, mostly because of my stubbornness of wanting this to be a fully foldable frame that still will uh, arrive to a customer fully assembled. And I know that put a lot of pressure on Rob and his team in order to pass those tests and everything. And you guys will uh, get to see some of that, but mm -hmm. you know, the we were blowing out controllers left and right in our original <laughs> testing <laughs> because we were loading it up with so much weight and we were trying to take on all the hills of San Francisco and stuff like that. And this project probably could have finished four months ago if we would have just decided to make use of a frame that wasn't foldable and pack more electronics in there. But we had to keep shrinking the electronics in order to fit in the back here. And it's just been a really uh, challenging experience. So for Robbie and Matt, our product, manager uh i think i would like to give them the highest honor which is the two clap let's give it all right someone came in a little too early let's give them another one another one another one all right that's all right let's go buy some bikes and let's go rip around on some 3.0s right now and uh this is